Good morning, my friend, and Happy New Year. It is January 2nd of a brand new year, 2023. So excited to be back behind the microphone. Had major computer issues yesterday. Turns out my computer was running some kind of big time update in the background, but it failed to notify me of that. So it was basically using all of the processing power to do this huge update that it automatically started and it would didn't have enough juice to do anything else. So it was overheating and I was trying to record a podcast for you and all that. And it just, the Lord made it clear to me, this isn't going to happen today. (laughs) So I brought back the November 30th episode about doing a new thing. And I think it's appropriate. So I hope you went back and listened to that again yesterday. And if not, you should just kind of get your mind on letting God do this new thing. And it's a brand new year. We always talk about resolutions and new goals and all that jazz. And and two days ago on Cell Print Surgery Saturday, we talked about the difference between resolutions and, and systems. And I hope that was helpful to you. Listen, I have a kind of a uh, prayer request, not kind of a prayer request. I have a prayer request. Um, there's a woman named Angela who they live in the Lincoln, Nebraska area. And I, she started following me on Instagram and I looked at to see who she was and she was posting about my book and and um, pretty quickly I realized that uh, her and her husband and her family are going through a difficult time of uh, her husband Mike having been diagnosed with glioblastoma. Of course this malignant brain tumor that I wrote in my book I've seen the end of you about and I uh, just had a little contact with her and we've been praying for her and Mike and the family and and I just said would it be okay if I shared a little bit of your story so Mike's had this remarkable story um Memorial Day of 2021, he started having headaches and some confusion, some trouble remembering people's names, and and they took him to the emergency department and found that he had a a tumor in his left temporal lobe, and that immediately sounded familiar to me. Some of the stories in my book, of course, we talked about the temporal lobe and its effect on language and speech processing and all of that, and it turns out that he's had... Um, surgery and some radiation and some radio surgery and and it's been through a whole bunch of treatments chemotherapy radiation surgery in the last uh, almost two years now and he's currently tumor free he's fighting this thing and then the most remarkable thing Angela shared with me is that she says Mike is a wonderful husband and father and stepfather he's a huge Kansas City Royals and Nebraska Huskers fan we love nature and exploring new places and he's worked full time throughout the entire ordeal that he's had with brain surgery. He's a loan officer, still lifting weights, working out, and building his faith in God. She says Mike is truly a warrior, choosing to live big day by day and currently cancer free as far as the MRIs are concerned. So just want to ask you to join Lisa and me and Tata in praying for Mike and Angela and their family that Mike will be one of those people that beats this disease. It's, it's not common uh, for people to have such a good head start and to be essentially tumor free at two years. So God's doing a work in their life and we just are going to pray in faith that he will give healing and peace and restoration, but more importantly, that he'll give the sense of the, being with them, that in all these journeys and all these things that they're going through when they have this help my unbelief moments that God will be faithful and be with them. So Mike and Angela, we and Lisa, me and Lisa and Tata and Harvey and Lewis and everybody in this community are praying for you and we're pulling for you and we'd love to hear from you more as, as Mike's story unfolds. And, and we just wanted to take an opportunity to let the whole world community that's listening today spend a minute uh, in time, some time in thought and prayer for Mike and Angela that uh, he's going to be one of these people that shows us that we don't know everything we think we know, uh, even about something scary like brain cancer. So we're with y'all and praying for you today. Hey, listen, friend, I got two voicemails through SpeakPipe yesterday uh, that I want to share with you. Um, One is a woman named Andrea uh, who's going through surgery this week to have her hip replaced, and just a little bit of what she said I want to share with you now. Here's Andrea. Good evening, Dr. Warren. I just want to let you know that I appreciate uh, your podcast and have been encouraged to try some of the techniques you've been talking about I tend to lean into depression and negative speaking. So um, it's been a huge encouragement for me. Love that, Andrea. Using the self-brain surgery techniques to help her change her mind. She has a tendency towards depression and negative thinking, as many of us do. Most of us do, if we're honest. And she's using these these ideas to help change her mind. Listen, that's exactly why we're here every day, Andrea. I appreciate you reaching out and sharing your thoughts with us. And got an incredibly encouraging 
voicemail yesterday from Marne Sprouse out in Washington State. Here's what Marne had to say. Hello, Dr. Warren and Lisa and Tata. This is Marne from the Columbia River Gorge. It's always a joy to hear you share about how we can change our thinking and change our lives. And um, if our actions are going to change, it starts in our brains. <laughs> and um, who better to be telling us how to do that than a neurosurgeon? <laughs> you really get it, Marnie. I said, we're all in this together, friend. And it just occurred to me a few years ago that, that uh, you know, all of us, no matter what you do for a living, you, there's some metaphors around your profession that you could use to encourage and help other people. And, you know, if I was a watchmaker, I might I might be talking about how to keep your how to keep your mind ticking. All right. So thank you, Marnie. You're always so encouraging. And we've been praying for you. And uh, Lisa and Tata and I are grateful for you and the way that you're so faithful to write in and let us know what's going on. Friend, listen, if you have something on your mind, we'd love to hear from you too. speakpipe.com slash Dr. Lee Warren. Speakpipe.com slash Dr. Lee Warren is the voicemail. Keep it classy so we don't have to bleep anybody, but we would love to share your thoughts uh, and what's going on with you. We're going to be praying for Andrea this week as she has her hip replaced. And, of course, um, keep praying for you. If you have something that you want to share with the community, the prayer wall is wlewarnmd.com slash prayer. And I'll keep Angela and Mike on there uh, in your mind and in your heart as they're going through this glioblastoma diagnosis and um Whatever you're going through, you have a community here that uh, wants to know, wants to help, um, and we're, we're happy to hear from you and share your story and your message around the world as well. So get after it, okay? Hey, it's Mind Change Monday. It's the first Monday of 2023. I got a short little uh, this versus that kind of thought for you this morning, um, and I, I want to share a couple of things with you, and we're going to look at... A, a, Three different little this versus that um, ideas. It's going to take just five or ten minutes, and then I want to get on your way for this day. I hope you have a day off and don't have to go back to work today. I am on call, but I'm going to try to stay around here. Lisa and I and Tata have a few projects we're going to try to uh, get knocked out before we have to go back to work, and I uh, hope that you get to do that too. So I'm going to get after Mind Change Monday. Remember, you can't change your life until you change your mind. And the good news is Lisa always tells us as you can start today. Hey, are you ready to change your life? If the answer is yes, there's only one rule. You have to change your mind first. And my friend, there's a place where the neuroscience of how your mind works smashes together with faith and everything starts to make sense. That place is called self-brain surgery. You can learn it and it will help you become healthier, feel better, and be happier. And the good news is you can start today. Thanks, Lisa. Hey, so glad to have you listening today. I'm Dr. Lee Warren, and I live in Nebraska in the United States of America with my incredible wife, Lisa, my father-in-law, Tata, and the super pups, Harvey and Lewis. I'm a neurosurgeon and an author, and I'm here to help you harness neuroscience, the power of your brain, faith, the power of your spirit, and good old common sense to help you lead a healthier, better, happier life. Listen, friend, you can't change your life until you change your mind, and I'm here to help you learn the art of self-brain surgery to get it done if you'd like to show Please subscribe so you never miss an episode and tell your friends about it. If you tell two or three friends this podcast was helpful to you, imagine how much good we can all do around the world together. I'm Dr. Lee Warren, and I'm here to help you change your mind so you can change your life. Let's get after it. All right, so here we are in 2023. It's kind of hard to believe we are already in a new year. I remember hearing the old people talk about that and by that when I was probably eight or nine the old people were probably 30 <laughs> isn't that funny <laughs> I saw a meme on Instagram the other day and it it said uh, you know those old tired haggard friends your parents had when you were a kid they were 30 <laughs> wow it's different when you're 50 or 53 like I am uh, it's funny how your perspective changes over the years. But I remember hearing people say, man, time's really flying. And I thought, well, time was constant. Time moves at the same rate all the time. It's one of the constants of physics, right? But the fact is, as you get older, it really does go faster, doesn't it? So anyway, we're here in the new year, and it's time to start thinking differently. So I want to give you three competing truths. I read, you know, I told you before many times, I read James Clear's newsletter every week. His 123 or 321 newsletter that he does every Thursday, which you can get for free at jamesclear.com. And again, I'm not connected to him in any way, but his book, Atomic Habits, is a great like mindset kind of book. And I 
find myself reading his newsletter every week and almost every week find something in it that makes me think or spurs me to write something different than I was planning on writing. And uh, a couple of days ago, he wrote, the most prepared usually wins. Okay, so he says that these are two competing truths. The most prepared usually wins, but also you get credit for action and not preparation. Those two truths are competing, and it's true. When you think about a football game, for example, the, the team with the best game plan, the team that spent the most time in film study, the team that's drawn up plays to counter what they see the other team doing, they have an advantage over the team that's less prepared, right? But you get credit for action. You get credit for what you actually do once the whistle blows and the ball gets kicked off. And you don't get credit for preparing. You get credit for action, right? So these are two competing truths. They're both true. That's the thing I love about quantum physics. It helps us understand that two things can be true at the same time. That, that's my whole thing. That's why I wrote um, Hope is the First Dose, is that this this gap between what Jesus said in John sixteen thirty three in the world you will have trouble, but take heart, I've overcome the world. And John ten ten, the thief comes to steal and kill and destroy, but I have come that they might have life and have it abundantly. This idea that we've been spending a lot of our time in our lives in the steal and kill and destroy part, right? Sometimes doing those things to ourselves, we drink too much alcohol, we eat too much, we drown our sorrows in shopping or gambling or pornography or inappropriate relationships or sitting on the couch and eating Cheetos or whatever it is. We we spend time because somebody has stolen or killed or destroyed something in our life. Somebody's done something to us. The market has crashed. The, the you know the habit has happened. The the divorce occurred. Whatever whatever it is, we we get in that that the bad diagnosis phase, or we get in that, ser- that that time period where we're reacting to something bad, this massive thing that's occurred, this evil, bad, dark circumstance, and we can't get out of that spot. And so we have to do something radical. That, that Jesus' idea was, I have come. The thief did, did this, but I have come, that they might have life and have it abundantly. So Jesus, the same Jesus who says, hey, in this world you're going to have trouble, also says, I came here that you can have an abundant life. So that means the abundance to which he speaks, to which he refers, can't mean that he came here to make all your circumstances easy. And if you can make that mind change on this Mind Change Monday, the first Monday of 2023, if you can say, I know God has a good plan for me and he's got a bunch of promises that apply to me, but that doesn't mean that every circumstance in my life is going to be happy and easy and fun and perfect. If I can make that mind change where I say I'm going to encounter hard things, but he came that I might have an abundant life anyway. Friend, if you can make that mind change today, then you will have an abundant and happier life in 2023, no matter what happens. When Angela and Mike, Memorial Day of 2021, weren't expecting to find out that he had glioblastoma, right? But he's living big anyway. He's still going to the gym. He's still going to work. He's still fighting through it because he knows God has a plan for him that is good for him, even though he has a difficult medical diagnosis. If you can make that mind change, going into this year, you'll have a tailwind and not a headwind. The, the, the tailwind of his promises is Second Peter chapter 1. He said, his divine power has given us everything we need. You've got what you need if you have him, Okay. You just have to change your mind about the difference between circumstance and joy, okay? So here's two more competing truths. Jesus says, your truth versus the truth. So in in John 14, 6, Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me, okay? That, that's Jesus' words, okay? I am the way and the truth and the life. Well, your culture right now is trying to tell you that you have a truth, that nobody else can tell you. The truth is your truth, and whatever you feel or whatever you believe or whatever you want, whatever you identify with is your truth. But I'm just telling you that that will not lead you to joy and happiness. Insisting that everyone agree with you about your truth and change objective reality to match up with your truth and your idea and your way will not lead you to happiness. It's a moving target, I promise you, friend. If you're following your truth and you're finding yourself more and more frustrated and offended and upset and hurt and things just nobody's getting it and nobody's helping you and everybody's overlooking you and you're tired of being tired, one thing that you might consider is following his truth instead of your truth because he says there's not a truth, there's only the truth. Jesus says, I am 
the way and the truth and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. So those are competing truths, your truth versus the truth. And if your truth doesn't seem to be producing joy in your life, maybe you need to think, I shouldn't have my truth. I should just have the truth, the truth. Think about that. Those are two competing truths. But in this case, unlike James Clear's, those two truths aren't compatible with each other. They are mutually exclusive. If Jesus says there is a, there is the truth, then there can't be your truth. There can only be the truth. And Paul gives us some too. This idea of living your best life now, I'm living my life, I'm living my life, my life the way I see fit. I am who I am and people need to accept me. That's what the culture is telling us right now. Well, Paul says this in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Jesus said, you have to die to yourself, right? You have to die to yourself and become like him. So Paul says this idea, there's two competing truths, your best life now versus living his best life for you. This idea that you are who you are and his idea is you died to yourself, now you're living in me. Those two competing truths are not compatible with one another. And if you're tired of slamming your head against the wall because you can't understand why your your best life now doesn't feel very best, maybe it's because you need to remember that you're not who you are. You're who he says you are. And you died to yourself and you're a new creation and you're supposed to model your life after him because his way is better than your way. The bottom line, friend, we have to make some decisions. We're going to make some mind change decisions today. If we want to get ahead of the frustration, circumstance, emotion curve in our life, we have to decide that we know who God is and therefore we know who we are before the massive thing happens, before the Memorial Day trip to the ER, before the bad diagnosis, before the market crash, before the divorce, before we find those text messages that he sent on his phone to who knows who. Before those things, we make the decision. We know who God is. We know God has a good plan for us. We know that even though this world will be hard and in this world we will have trouble and the thief comes to steal and kill and destroy, we still know that he came to give us abundant life and we can find a path through it and still tell a good story with our life and still find his joy and his happiness, his Macarios, his untouchable happiness. Even when TMT happens, we build and form our lives to pursue him and let him be enough because we recognize that we are not enough. And we relentlessly refuse to participate in our own demise because life is hard enough as it is, friend. As Jesus said, each day has enough trouble of its own, Matthew 6, 34. And so, on this first Mind Change Monday of 2023, going into a new year, we are, I want you to think just for a moment about what are some things that you need to change your mind about. What are some things that your way of thinking has been harmful to you about in the past? And what are some things, if you changed your mind about them today on this Monday, January 2nd, 2023, we're going to decide, we're going to set our intention and follow through. We're going to worship in a minute with my friend Tommy Walker and his song, I Have Decided. And by the way, if you haven't signed up for Tommy and Robin Walker's seven-day version Bible study, you can do it with me and Lisa it's, it's seven days. It goes through some stories around some old hymns. And on Tommy's website, you can listen to his version of all those hymns. I'll put a link in the show notes. Just sign up for it today. It starts tomorrow. Get after it. And it's just a seven-day Bible study. It'll help you make some decisions about deciding what you're going to do with this year and with your life. We're going to decide. We're going to set our intention and follow through. And we're going to sing in a minute with Tommy, I have decided to follow Jesus. We're going to change our minds, friend. And we're going to change our lives. And the good news is... What's the good news? Can you tell me? We're going to start today. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back.
If I'm rich or I'm poor, I'll be at your side till my days are no more. I'll stand for your truth. Lord, I'll live for your holy name. Hey, thanks for listening. Please subscribe to the show so you automatically get every episode. And if you like the show, you'll love my weekly letter. Check out my writing at drleewarren.substack.com, drleewarren.substack.com. Get the free newsletter every week for my best prescriptions for becoming healthier, feeling better, and being happier through the power of faith and neuroscience smashing together via self-brain surgery, drleewarren.substack.com. And if you need prayer, go to the prayer wall at wleewarrenmd.com slash prayer. The theme music for the show is Make Us One by Tommy Walker, graciously provided for free by the great folks over at tommywalkerministries.org. Check it out and consider supporting them, tommywalkerministries.org. Remember, you can't change your life until you change your mind. And the good news is you can start today. I'm Dr. Lee Warren. I'll talk to you soon. God bless you, friend. Have a great day.